The fight between Alex Pereira and Jamahal Hill sent shockwaves far beyond the realms of mixed martial arts and has even gotten mind-blowing reactions from boxing professionals. From the ringside to public places and even homes of professional boxers, several reactions were captured after the epic matchup proved to be truly worth the hype. The final fight of the historic UFC 300 card featured a light heavyweight championship fight between Alex Pereira and Jamahal Hill. Pereira was looking to capitalize heavily on his title win over Jiri Prochaska back in November 2023 as this was his first title defense. Pereira had of course captured the promotion's vacant light heavyweight title at UFC 295, defeating former champion Jiri Prochaska via TKO in round 2. In the meantime, Poetan had continued his rapid ascent since transitioning from kickboxing, joining the select group of two-weight UFC champions by defeating Jiri Prochaska in November in just his 11th fight as a mixed martial artist. Prior to becoming the ninth two-division champion in UFC history, Poetan was coming off a split decision, win over Jan Blakowicz in his 205 pounds debut. Meanwhile, Jamahal Hill was competing for the first time since winning the vacant light heavyweight title over Glover Takes Sarah at UFC 283 in January of 2023. Sweet Dreams was of course later forced to vacate the belt before ever having the chance to defend it due to an Achilles tendon tear. He entered the headline bout making his return to action after an injury playing basketball last summer forced him to vacate the title just months after he had defeated Pereira's mentor Glover Teixeira at UFC 283 in a landmark event that had already seen Max Holloway produce one of the greatest knockouts in the history of the sport. The main event pair had a tough act to follow. And like one who perfectly understood his assignment, Alex Pereira knocked out Jamahal Hill in the first round of their UFC 300 main event clash on Saturday to defend his UFC light heavyweight title for the first time. The summary of the match was as brief as a 10 second speech, as Pereira didn't hesitate to go for leg kicks once the bell rang. However, Jamahal landed a right hand on Poetan, as Alex Pereira is fondly called. Notwithstanding, Pereira blocked a high kick. Moving on, Pereira was accidentally low blowed, but he declined referee Herb Dean's involvement. And finally, a left hook from Pereira, then dropped Hill. Poetina hit some follow-up punches, and that's a wrap. The match was over. Upon witnessing the breathtaking end to this bout, many professional boxers and mixed martial artists were quick to react, starting from the ringside. Alex Pereira got his last loss against Israel Adesanya, and just last year, Israel Adesanya was joined by Anthony Joshua to give another boxer of Nigerian descent one of the best ring walks of the year. And out the noise of the Polish counterparts as Lawrence Akoli gets set to make his walk to the ring for his second defense. And now, Anthony Joshua, after seeing Alex Pereira's incredible knockout of Jamahal Hill, made his comments. Though brief as the match itself was, his comment summed up the entirety of the bout. That was crazy. No one saw it coming. He's never been knocked out before. And this came in the first round. It's huge. Another boxer, though in the lightweight division, whose hands are as fast on his keypads as they are in his gloves, turned to X to give his reaction to the bout. He said, congrats to Pereira. Watch me do that to Devin Haney on the 20th. Garcia was surely not ceasing any opportunity he had to attack and fire shots at his opponent. He saw Alex Pereira's unbelievable win as an opportunity, and he utilized every bit of it impressively. It's possible that he gets more shots in return, should the super lightweight champion respond to his comments. Moving on, former Ultimate Fighting Championship World Heavyweight Champion, who recently had back-to-back -back losses against two of Britain's very best heavyweight boxers in history, Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury, also made his comments. Francis, who has become not just more famous, but far richer than he was in his UFC days, after making his bold move to boxing had some opinions to share as well. Francis, during his UFC career, was known to give some of the very best knockout displays, and so, commenting on Alex Pereira's knockout win, it was surely coming from a place of familiarity and respect. Francis reacted, That's a bad knockout. I knew he wasn't coming from that. He did a great job, and he shows why his punch has set a new record. Talking about the record, Francis's reaction came after his famous punch record was smashed by Alex Pereira recently.
Let's see if you can do better. Alex Pereira did not just beat, but obliterated Francis's old record on the power cube to land the hardest punch in the world. The power cube is a device to measure the power of a single strike, with a padded target hooked up to a computer and data delivered in real time. Francis, the former UFC heavyweight champion, who was known for his freakish strength and knockout ability, had a go on the machine back in 2018. He scored 129.161 units of power, and at the time, Dana White said, his punches are equivalent to 96 horsepower. That's equal to getting hit by a Ford Escort going as fast as it can. And it's more powerful than a 12-pound sledgehammer from full force overhead. Holy stuff! However, another UFC fighter, Joe Pfeiffer, then went on to beat Francis's score with a blow that registered at 170,218 units. But recently, Pereira, the light heavyweight champion, who is also known for his concussive ability in the cage, has surpassed that. Footage has emerged of Potan thudding the power cube with a solid right hand and reaching a score of 191, 796. Oh my oh, gosh! Bro. 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 bro! 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 Yellow! Alex Pereira destroyed Francis Ngannou's punch record. The reaction in the gym said it all, with stunned training partners barely believing their eyes at the Brazilian's effort. Power Cube measures speed, power, and endurance. The impact power that Francis and Pereira scored combines power, measured in watts, with energy, measured in joules, to form a single concise metric that accurately reflects a combat athlete's striking power, according to the company's website. Speed is measured by timing the gap between a strike and the on-screen trigger, prompting it and endurance over a high volume of strikes. The PowerCube Go is a portable device and retails to gyms and athletes at 2,158.80 pounds. Popular commentator Joe Rogan also had his comments to give immediately after the fight. In time past, after offering some intriguing analysis on the title fight, it was clear that Joe Rogan's favorite was the challenger. Rogan had UFC Hall of Famer Daniel Cormier as a guest on an episode of the JRE MMA show. During the show, Rogan told his guests that he believed Pereira would be in for a tough task against Sweet Dreams. I think Jamahal Hill a real challenge for him, Rogan said. Jamahal's a sniper, man. He finds chins. He's clever, dude. Cormier went on to tell Rogan about a recent video where Hill claimed he'd knocked Pereira outstanding. Joe wasn't dismissive of that possible outcome. Jamahal's got some nasty hands, man, Rogan said. He really does have some nasty hands. Rogan admitted that Hill's opposition up to that point hadn't matched that of Pereira's. With that said, Rogan believed Jamahal had the skills to get the job done. You know, I have never seen him fight anybody of that caliber yet, but I think he's capable, Rogan said. What he did to Glover was very impressive. Just beat him up. I mean, when you think how Jiri struggled with Glover and then Jamahal Hill just pieced him up. Oh my God, and it was clever. It was smooth. On another show, Joe Rogan became Hill's advocate as he claimed Jamahal Hill doesn't get enough credit. On his show, he said, Jamahal Hill is freaking dangerous, Rogan said on one of the episodes of the JREMA show podcast. Watch the fight with Glover. He pieced Glover up and Glover is freaking good to piece him up like that on the feet. People underestimate Hill for some strange reason and I don't understand it. I've heard people talk about his power. Watch that Johnny Walker fight. He hit him in the forehead like he got hit by a sniper. He's good. He's freaking dangerous. Jama Hall's a one-punch knockout striker at light heavyweight for sure. He's a big tall dude and he knows movement. He's freaking dangerous, man. A lot of people are picking Pereira to run him over, which I think is interesting. I'm not sure about that. I think this is going to be a great fight. Also, Joe Rogan went as far as going all out to raise concerns of Jamahal Hill's fitness to show how much he rooted for the challenger. While the 32-year-old insisted he's recovered and in peak condition ahead of the biggest fight of his MMA career, it was Rogan who had previously admitted he hated one of the most anticipated fights at UFC 300 that had concerns over the American's Achilles and claims it would suck if he wasn't completely fit. God damn it would suck if he came in at 70% and not 100, he said on his podcast. Because the thing is, there's got to be a lot of pressure to be on UFC 300. And you might be like, I can do it, I can do it. I don't know, I'm hoping it's 
and I would imagine that he's an elite UFC World Championship caliber athlete that he would have. I just don't want Jamahal to be compromised in any way. It's such a big fight. The UFC commentator, who will be calling the action at UFC 300, also believed Hill was still the UFC light heavyweight champion. He's the world champ. He just relinquished the title, he explained. He's just fighting for his title essentially because he didn't lose it. I bet he only gave it up because Jerry gave it up. It's kind of like a warrior's code. Those guys are warriors. That's a warrior's division. However, after Jamahal Hill's shocking loss to Alex Pereira, Joe Rogan had this to say, it's come as a surprise really, but I stick to my comments about his fitness. He probably went in there at 80. You shouldn't go into matches if you're any short of 100. Congrats to Pereira. Alex Pereira also left fellow UFC fighters in awe after delivering his stunning first round knockout of Jamahal Hill at UFC 300. In one of the most packed cards in the promotion's history, the Brazilian Pereira, who has been claimed to have the hardest punch in the world, sent Hill sprawling to the canvas with a left hook in the opening round. The reaction of fellow UFC stars was captured in the fighters' row, with footage capturing their shock and appreciation at Pereira's brutal blow. Interim UFC heavyweight champion Tom Aspinall was among those shown in the footage, with the English fighter left applauding after being seen saying, Oh my God! Aspinall has been viewed as a potential future opponent for Pereira, who has raised the prospect of featuring in Rio next month at heavyweight. One of Pereira's previous opponents, Israel Adesanya, was also spotted reacting to the Brazilian's knockout of Hill. Adesanya immediately responded by placing his arms on his head in shock as Hill suffered the first knockout loss of his career. After capturing other fighters' reactions, the camera panned back to Adesanya who was left shaking his head. Don't play the game, don't play the game man, Adesanya said. Adesanya had previously suffered a technical knockout loss to Pereira to lose his middleweight title back in November 2022 before avenging the defeat the following year. UFC featherweight champion Ilya Toporia was also seen expressing his appreciation for the knockout, with the Spanish star seen raising his eyebrows and tapping Adesanya to acknowledge Pereira's display. It definitely must have come as a shock to Israel Adesanya, who had always picked Jamahal Hill as his favorite ahead of the bout. The former UFC middleweight champion Israel Adesanya shared his prediction for the UFC 300 main event that saw Alex Pereira defending his light heavyweight title against Jamahal Hill. Adesanya is very familiar with Pereira, having fought him twice in kickboxing and twice in MMA. The last style bender is the last person to beat Pereira, as he knocked him out to win back the middleweight title, which forced the Brazilian up to the light heavyweight division. Jamahal I don't think is scared, Adesanya said on his YouTube channel channel, scary knockout power as well. Alex can get knocked out, avoiding the leg kicks is the tricky bit, and I know Jamahal has some remedies for that. Five rounds, going to be a slow start. Jamahal's gonna try to get his fist to Alex's head, just like he did with Johnny Walker. I'm gonna go Jamahal by knockout, first two and a half rounds. To even strengthen their bond, Hill had once asked for some tips and strategies to defeat Alex Pereira. Israel Adesanya was just giving me some advice and insights on what he's seen, and his experience of being in there fighting Alex. Hill revealed during the UFC Vegas 90 post-fight show. Just basically essentially those things and how to approach and things like that. It must be remembered that Israel Adesanya was the one who handed Pereira his last defeat after several unsuccessful contests with the world champion. Let's dive a bit into the epic match. After Alex Pereira had scored three wins over Israel Adesanya across kickboxing and mixed martial arts, it was fair to think he simply had Adesanya's number. In the main event of UFC 287 in Miami, Adesanya changed that story, scoring a brutal second round knockout to once again become middleweight champion. Pereira had brutalized Adesanya's legs with kicks from the start of the fight, returning to one of the primary techniques that had worn down Adesanya in their previous meeting at UFC 281. In that fight, Adesanya had controlled the action for most of the fight before the leg kicks took a toll and helped set up a Pereira flurry to score the come from behind knockout and end Adesanya's time as champion. Those same kicks landed early and often for Pereira. Adesanya continued to fire back with his own kicks and heavy punches, but Pereira stalked forward consistently. In the second round, the constant abuse to his calf muscles seemed to have Adesanya on the verge of being finished yet again. 
After Adesanya's leg buckled, Pereira followed him to the cage and unloaded with a brutal flurry of punches and knees. Pereira did not remain defensively responsible during the attempt at a fight-ending flurry, and Adesanya quickly shifted from covering up to unloading a massive right-hand counter. That shot sent Pereira stumbling, and another right hand put him down. A follow-up shot on the ground landed for Adesanya, bringing the fight to a close at the 4.21 mark of round two. Prior to their UFC 281 meeting, Pereira and Adesanya had fought twice in the kickboxing ring. In the first meeting, Pereira took a close and somewhat controversial decision. The kickboxing rematch ended much more decisively, with Pereira putting Adesanya to sleep in the third round. Just over seven years after they first battled, Adesanya finally got the better of Pereira, and he was overjoyed with the result. He said, I hope all of you can feel how f-king happy I am just once in your life, Adesanya said after the fight. But guess what? You will never feel this level of happiness if you don't go for something in your own life. When they knock you down, when they try and shit on you, when they talk shit about you and they try and put their foot on your neck, if you stay down, you will never get that resolve. Fortify your mind and feel this level of happiness one time in your life. I'm blessed to be able to feel this shit again and again and again and again and again. They say revenge is sweet. If you know me, you know I got a sweet tooth. This is freaking sweet. UFC 300 was magnificent in all aspects, and the matches disappointed no one, with most of the fighters participating in what was really their biggest ever match. Alex Pereira's Powhatan nickname translates to Stone Hands, but his stone-cold demeanor is most terrifying. Pereira, unbothered by the power Jamahal Hill possessed, knocked out the challenger in one round to cap off an all-time memorable UFC 300 card on Saturday. The UFC light heavyweight division has struggled with consistency since John Jones vacated the title in August 2020. Multiple vacancies and a boring draw prevented the weight class from moving forward. After knocking out Hill and Jiri Prochaska successively, Pereira is poised to carry the division into the future. The finishing sequence will be fondly remembered. Referee Herb Dean called for a timeout after Hill kicked Pereira in the groin. Pereira, without ever taking his eyes off his prey, nudged the referee back with his hand. Moments later, the laser-focused champion landed a left uppercut that rolled Hill's eyes back. Pereira measured his distance and rained down ground and pound to render Hill unconscious. Pereira's second light heavyweight title fight was also the second faster stoppage of his mixed martial arts career, topped only by a 2022 knockout of Sean Strickland at middleweight. Pereira vs. Hill was originally targeted for UFC 301 in the champion's home nation of Brazil. Pereira doubled down on his desire to make the quick turnaround to fight again on the May 4th pay-per-view in Rio de Janeiro. Interestingly, Pereira said he wanted the short-notice fight to take place at heavyweight. I want to keep defending this belt, Pereira said through an interpreter during his post-fight interview at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. I talked a lot about fighting in Brazil. I won this fight. I'm not hurt. Nothing happened. I know there needs to be a lot of promotion behind a fight, but I want to fight at heavyweight. Multiple story threads were at play on Saturday night. Pereira, despite rejecting the narrative, completed a revenge arch in the name of his mentor, Glover Teixeira. Hill and Prochaska defeated Teixeira in consecutive UFC title fights, leading to his retirement. Pereira's first two light heavyweight title fights ended in KO victories over the same two men who beat his close friend. There was also a matter of lineage. Prochaska and Hill had claims to the championship after vacating it due to injury. By defeating both men back to back, Pereira crushed any doubt about being the best light heavyweight in the promotion. Pereira's quick success in MMA is remarkable. He won UFC titles in two weight classes by his 11th professional fight and has defeated five UFC champions in octagon appearances. A uniquely decorated striker, Pereira is the only man to win multiple weight class titles in both glory kickboxing and UFC. Plus, women's strawweight champion Zhang Wei Li retained her title with a decision over Yan Xiaoyan. That fight saw some dramatic swings as Zhang appeared to finish Yan twice in the first two rounds only for Yan to rally in the middle rounds and give the champ all she could handle. But the highlight of the night had to be Max Holloway. Blessed, battered former lightweight title challenger Justin Gaethje 
over five rounds before delivering a brutal knockout that left Gaethje out cold with one second left on the clock. The former featherweight king hopes to get a shot at either the featherweight or lightweight titles next. After UFC CEO Dana White promised to bump up the performance bonuses from $50,000 to $300,000 at Thursday's press conference, fighters went all out to capture the extra money. And that's all for now. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Until next time, peace out.